network here, I've got a simple network here. Uh, it's a 192.168.1 network, 24-bit mask. I've got one client on it, and that client has got two routes off the network, two routers that he can get out via. So let's just ping a remote client on another network segment. You can see I'm going to go out via 254, which is the top router on the diagram. So if I attempt to ping this client here that's on another network segment, which is on 172.16.1.10, you can hopefully I get a ping response. So I've got comms off my LAN to that remote client via the router at the top. Now if we just take a look at the ARP table, we can see that I've stored the MAC address for that interface on the router in my MAC address table. Now the problem is of course, on this router that I'm going out of via if that interface were to go down, here I'm manually shutting it down, you can see it's gone red. This client then can obviously no longer ping that remote client because his default gateway is essentially down. Now I can fix this of course because I've got two routes off the network. I can change my default gateway to 253 and on the PC at the far end obviously I'm gonna have to do the same so now because I've manually swapped it across to the other router just let it uh, pick up an ARP there we go I've got comms back again but obviously if you've got thousands of clients that's got to be not an option for you it would be much better if we could have one virtual IP address that was shared amongst both the routers. Let's have a look at the ARP table on there now, and you can see because I've manually changed the default gateway, I've got two MAC addresses in the cache. Okay, let's bring that interface back up again. Now, like I say, if we could have a virtual IP address shared between the two, that would be ideal, which is exactly what HSRP is going to do for us. So if I pick an IP address that's not in use, I'm going to go for uh, one, uh, sorry, 250. And all I do is, in the interface configuration mode, I simply type in standby, then a number for the standby group, one, space ISIP, and then that virtual IP address that I'm going to use. Now, straight away, that starts to work. This router is having a look around the network to see if anybody else is using it, and that is what's going on there. It's gone initially into standby mode. It's had a look around. It can see that nobody else is using that, so this router has become the active HSRP virtual IP exit for the network. So let's have a look in the ARP table on the router, and you can see that now there is another entry for 250 ends in F001, which is the virtual IP that it's going to be using for HSRP. So let's have a look at the standby settings. We can see that this router is active. It's using the virtual IP 192.168.1.250. The active router is local. The standby router is unknown. And the priority is 100. I'll come back and talk about priority later, but that's the default priority because we haven't manually set it. Now that's already up and working on the network, even though we've only configured it on one router. So if I change the default gateway on here to 250, which is our new virtual IP address, I should still be able to ping the other side. Let's have a look on the IP. Yep, my default gateway has now changed to 250. And even without dropping an ARP packet, I've got four clean pings. If I look at in the ARP table now, you'll see I have an entry for that F001 MAC address, which is on 
the 250 address which is my, my default gateway so let's look at the config on the second router which is router 1 and the command is exactly the same get on to the um, gigabit ethernet 00 interface which is on 253 and the command is identical standby standby group 1 IP 192.168.1.250 exactly the same now what this should do is it should see after a few seconds it's automatically going to enter standby while it's looking if we do a do show standby and have a look at what's going on we can see this one's gone straight into standby there's a virtual IP address that we manually configured and it can see there's the MAC address that we saw on our machine but look at this it's discovered that the active router is on 254 which is why this one's gone straight into standby so the standby router is local and again the default priority on this one is set to 100 so if I have a look in the app table on this one you'll see there is no entry for 250 because at this point 250 lives on the other router therefore it is not in the ARP table. So, if I go into uh, the main router at the top there and test the system by simply shutting down that interface, you'll see it's gone red again. All being well, let's just jump onto router 1 and see what's happened. You can see we've got a status message there to state that this router has gone active. It's detected the failure of the other one. So if we do a show standby you can see that this one state is now active. Standby router is unknown which is understandable because it, it can't see it at that layer 2 at the minute because that interface is down. That's fair enough because that link is off. But more importantly, can my client still get to the other side? And we would hope so. Yes, we can. Now, in reality, this is actually working because we changed the default gateway on the other side earlier on. In reality, what would happen is the other side would send its traffic to this router at the top, and that would fail. So to get around that, what we would do is we would also configure an HSRP standby IP address on the 01 interfaces for the client on the other side. It's another standby group, so I'm going to call this one standby2, and I'm going to give it a 172.16.1.250 IP address. And then on the router at the bottom, I'm going to do exactly the same. Again, the reason I'm doing this is if I hadn't changed the um, default gateway earlier on on the um, remote client, then this would have failed because that would have sent its traffic back via its static default gateway of the router at the top, which had a downed interface. So I'm just mirroring exactly what I did on router 0, on router 1. So I've now got HSRP standby IP on both those interfaces. Obviously I'm going to have to change the default gateway on that one to 250 but that's all the configuration that I need to do. Okay let's bring that interface back up again. It'll just take a few seconds for Portfast to do its thing on the switch for it to come back up. There we go. Now let's say for argument's sake that the router at the top uh, was a 10 gig lease line and the one at the bottom was uh, an ADSL we would want 
the router at the top to be the priority route out most of the time. As you can see at the minute the one at the top is active. Now what's going to happen is if it fills across it will stay filled across and it will stay that way forever until there's another failure. So what we need to do is alter the priority on the router at the top, go back into the um, gigabit ethernet 00, zero interface again and this time I'm going to issue a standby one because it's standby group one priority and I'm going to up the priority from 100 which is the default to 105 so this one now has a higher priority and therefore should be used if it is up. Now one of the things about HSRP is um, it, it doesn't automatically fail to the highest priority unless you put another command in which is standby standby group preempt which says that if this one is up this one will launch a coup and it will seize the virtual IP and the route out. Okay, so this one has now gone active on group one because I've told it it's got a higher priority and I've told it to preempt or launch a coup if it is up. Let's just bring that interface back up again. And we've got active on group one. So we can see on group one, status is active, the active router is local. We've told it to preemptively launch a coup as soon as it is up because it's got a priority of 105, which is 5 higher than the default of 100, which is configured on router 1 at the bottom. Okay, what would happen if that interface were to go down? If that interface were to go down, let's test it out. That's now down, but because the router at the top has a higher priority on both the inside interface, the zero zeros, on both the routers are up, it is not filled across. So we've effectively lost comms. Destination host unreachable. So to get around that, what we need to do is in the standby group on the router at the top, route zero, is to track the status of that interface. So let's just bring that back up again and jump out of uh, Gigabit Ethernet 01 and go back into 00. zero. And now what we're going to do is we're going to track the status of Gigabit Ethernet 01. And if that interface goes down, what it will do is it will take 10 of the priority of this particular router. Now remember we set it to 105, so if we subtract 10, that will take it to 95, and it will be of a lower priority should the outside interface go down. So to do that, the command is standby, standby group number, track, and then the name of the interface. So if we have a look now, if we run show standby, we can see at the minute we're active. But more importantly, we are at priority 105. We're configured 105. It will track the interface gigabit ethernet 01. And when it goes down, it will decrement 10 from that, making its priority 95. Sure, if it has a lower priority, then the other one should become the master. You would think so, but remember, it will not automatically switch over unless we allow the other router to preempt taking over. 
So we need to go into the interface configuration of its inside the interface, or Gigabit Ethernet 00, and we need to do a standby one preempt. So that if this becomes the highest priority, it will take the virtual IP address. Okay. So let's make sure that we can still ping our remote client. Yep. We've got comms out. Now, let's test our tracked interface by taking down the outside interface of that one. Now, remember, that's got the highest priority. So at the minute, traffic will be going out through that router. So if I shut down the Gigabit Ethernet 01 interface on that router, because that is tracked, it should flip across to the other one. Okay, that's definitely the link down. So, hopefully, it should flip straight across to the other one. If we have a look on that one, you can see that this one, a group one, has gone from standby to active, and group two has gone from standby to active. So it's taken over. Let's have a look at the standby settings as they are at the minute. Remember there's two standby groups on here, so you can see that even though this is priority 100, because it's default, now the other one is 95, it has seized the virtual IP, and that is now the default route out. Let's just bring that interface back up again. And group one has instantly gone active because it's got a higher priority. We just have to wait a few seconds for port fast to finish doing its thing. There we go, and we are fully active. On both port groups, or both standby groups. Okay, to summarise then, the config for the main router, or the router that we want to be um, have the highest priority, inside it's configured on Gigabit Ethernet 00. It's got a static IP address of 254 on the inside and the outside. So we're talking primarily about router zero here. And router one, which is the one we've got secondary, has a much has much less config upon it. All that essentially needs are the standby IP addresses, and there is a preempt command in there, because if this becomes the highest priority, we would we would like it to take the virtual IP from the other one, which is why there's a preempt in there. And on the outside, we've got our standby group 2 IP address of 250, just for the outside facing IP addresses. And that's us. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.peatnetlife.com.